Prime Minister Hariri, thank you very much for speaking to us on thank Euronews. You. This has been a big year for Lebanon. You've held elections, parliamentary elections, for the first time in almost a decade. Yeah. But that was in May, mm -hmm. and um, you still haven't been able to form a government. Yes. Why is that so difficult? And doesn't that mean that it's going to be virtually impossible for you to actually govern this country? No, I think we will reach the formation. I think uh, what people need to understand that this is a government that people think that's going to last for four years. Uh, and it has come after, like you said, a decade of uh, no elections. So the new parliament has new members and the sizes of each uh, political group has changed. So the challenge in making a national unity government or, in, uh, or a consensus government is going to be a little bit difficult because you have so many different parties that you have to satisfy and, and see which, w which, e which political party wants more from here or there. So this is the only reason we have this difficulty. This political uncertainty hasn't really helped the economy, yeah. which has been struggling for years now. Without a government, Lebanon can't implement the reforms needed to get the debt under control and unblock billions of dollars in pledged foreign investment. How long can you go on like this? We can't go long for, uh, for long. I mean, this is something that is very uh, difficult for the economy. What we're doing now, actually, there are certain laws that we have passed in the previous government that today they are in parliament. And parliament is being, uh, they're doing their job today. Uh, certain committees are meeting to pass these laws. And hopefully within weeks we will have these laws passed. But I agree with you, you know, the, pro the, the, the political parties that we have in Lebanon need to understand that the economy comes first and the reforms comes first. And I think this is, a, this is unfortunate that this is happening, but uh, if you go back in history in Lebanon, we've had, you know, sometimes to form a government, we went as far as seven months and eight months to form a government. Electing president took us two years and a half. But regardless, I am very, you know, optimistic that things will, will develop in the coming few weeks to come. Governing a place like Lebanon can't be an easy task. You've got a very difficult history. You've got a complex power sharing arrangement between all uh, different religions. And you're right now surrounded by war. I've spoken to many people here who told me that you are the man who is keeping all the pieces together of this puzzle. Why do you think that is? Why are you the right man to lead Lebanon? I think, you know, I, I think of Lebanon before I think of myself. And I think what we need is somebody who can talk to everyone in the, within the political parties that we put in the government. Uh, if you want to have a consensus government, everybody has to compromise a little bit. And sometimes I tend to maybe compromise a little bit more because I believe that the country, you know, is more important than my political party and, and others. So uh, the the reason why me, I think, uh, I, I think, uh, I, I I focus on on the country. I think that uh, talking to each party differently and and trying to bring people together is what I'm good at and I and I hope I can continue doing the same thing in this government. Uh, I think you know it's gonna we will reach the formation very soon uh, but I believe what's more important is the functioning of this government because you have so many different political parties and uh, and one as a prime minister should not take a, a, a side when you govern such a complex government and this is maybe the key of the success in, in how we do things here in Lebanon. You seem to be very determined and you have given this country so much already. But last year you gave up in a way. You announced your resignation in a televised address from Saudi Arabia. I think the fact that you resigned, but also the way you resigned, shocked was a big surprise to your, to your supporters, but to the whole world. What happened? Why did you do things like that? I wanted to give a shock to the system because I was believing that the government was going into a way of governing that people were taking sides and, and we weren't able to govern. Plus, you know, the challenges that we have ar around the region, we need Lebanon to stay 
in a, in, a, in a position where it doesn't take any position. Uh, and this is where we, we came with the policy of disassociation. People were moving away from the disassociation. People were getting involved in you know, political fights and, and with the Gulf and others against Iran and against uh, Syria. Well, my focus is, you know, if we want stability in Lebanon, we need to, to you know, uh, alienate ourselves from the problems. It doesn't mean it does not going to affect us. It did affect us in the past. But we need to do a policy in, in Lebanon where we, we say if two countries are not, you know, uh, happy with each other outside us, we need to, you know, stay away from that. And we need to have a disassociation policy where we say, you know, this is your fight, not ours. And we need to make sure that the message is clear to, towards these countries. What was happening before my resignation at the time, we, um, people were, you know, attacking every single country around us. And this is not healthy for Lebanon. And, you know, it's like inviting trouble into your country. My, my resignation was basically a, a positive shock to alarm people to say, listen, this is not the way to move forward. The way to move forward is to n not making Lebanon neutral, but disassociating Lebanon from all the inner Arab conflicts that we have. Um, once again, I think it was more than the fact that you, you sent that strong message. It was the way you phrased things and where you were. Can you tell us more about your relationship with Saudi Arabia? My relationship with Saudi Arabia is excellent. I have a great relationship with uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the uh, Crown Prince, and uh, we have had uh, long talks. And uh, you know, we did the Sadr conference, and Saudi Arabia came out and put a billion dollars for in, in development funds for Lebanon. I think the relationship is uh, is excellent. Uh, it's in the benefit for Lebanon, it's in the benefit of Saudi Arabia. We need to understand that the Gulf also today is in a very tight spot with what's, what's happening in Yemen and all of that. And that's why we, Lebanon, we need to look at our national interests. I mean, involving ourselves in, in Yemen or involving ourselves in Syria will only bring you know problems or trouble to Lebanon. Uh, I understand there are political parties in Lebanon that they have different point of view. And this is what used to kill, I mean not kill, but used to cripple the country where we put our political differences before the benefit of the country. What we did in, uh, since electing President Aoun, we said to ourselves, look, political differences will put them aside. Uh, and we will work on the economy, we will work on reforms for the country. And that's why we were able, to, we were able to succeed in, form in, in, in putting a new election law. That's why we were able to pass the budget for 12 years. We weren't able to pass any budget. We passed two budgets. We, we passed, you know, the, the <coughs> we were able to do the uh, Rome conference, the Sadr conference. But this is based on a consensus. At one point in November, there were, you know, I felt uh, no, we were not be going to be able to do any of that because we were we went back to the to the old ways of working in the country. W w then, you know, the the resignation came in, and the relationship with Saudi Arabia has been excellent since then. You're talking about bringing the focus back to Lebanon. To Lebanon, what does Lebanon need right now? What is reform. going to be your focus? We need to reform. We need to focus on our economy. We have a problem, uh, you know, the refugees. We have 1.5 million refugees. This is an issue that we need to resolve with a united voice in Lebanon. There are certain initiatives that come out from here and there. There is today the Russian initiative, which is, which we should work with the Russians in making it a, a, a workable uh, initiative. Whereas, you know. We want the refugees to go back in their own voluntarily. Uh, we need UNHCR to be involved. We need uh, those refugees would need money in, in, in there. Uh, we need guarantees that the regime will not, you know, uh, uh, do anything for those refugees. And this is something for the international community to figure out, where we need to be helpful in trying to make the logic 
for the international community to un to make sure that the refugees go back to Syria. This is something that we suffer every day from, and if we don't have, we, st we don't start working uh, on a on an exit strategy on how to get there. Uh, we will only be failing Lebanon, and we will only be failing the interest of the Lebanese. It's interesting because uh, even when we talk about bringing the focus back to Lebanon. One of the first things is is the region. One of the first issues, because it's so intertwined, isn't it? What's happening around you is affecting Lebanon uh, profoundly. I want to I want to bring uh, back to to your resignation, just because you mentioned last year uh, you blamed Iran for disorder. I quote you: "Disorder and destruction here in Lebanon." And you said that Hezbollah is Iran's arm in this country, and that it has imposed a fait accompli on Lebanon through the power of uh, its weapons. Now Hezbollah and their allies control the majority of the parliament. What does that mean? They don't control the majority. This is a perception that people have put in the international community or certain media outlets put in there. But Hezbollah only has 13 members or 14 members in the, in the parliament. Uh, and, uh, and I think uh, the parliament today is divided into three or four blocks where you have people who are in the middle people on the right, people on the left, and just people close to the right and the left. And, uh, and I believe today uh, in that, uh, uh, when I reside, I, I talked about all of that. We have political differences. Hezbollah knows that, and we, I know that. They will never accept my policies vis-a-vis -vis, you know, the Gulf, or the, and I will never accept their policy vis-a-vis -vis Iran and other stuff. But it does not mean that we should stop the country from functioning. What I'm trying to reach is, yes, we will always have these differences, and we will always quarrel about them. But do, what do we do? Do we focus on that, or do we focus on, we say, this is, we put it on a dialogue table, we will talk about it calmly and see what are the solutions and how do we solve these issues. And then at the same time, we bring, because what, what, what brings us together is far more that separates us. I mean, w we can do a lot for the country. And I think the economy, everybody has uh, interest in fighting corruption. Everybody has interest in re the reforms. Everybody has interest in making the growth from 1.5% to 5 and 7%. It's the method of doing this. If we come together and w are able to, all of us, uh, uh, agree on a, on a plan for the economy and lifting the Lebanon from, from where it is today, it will only make it more difficult for us in the future to quarrel about these issues that really, in essence, don't matter for Lebanon. It's interesting that you're saying reforming the economy and, and working on bigger plans, but it's almost like, from an outside perspective, Lebanon needs some very basic services. Uh, let's talk about electricity. Let's talk about waste management. I mean, this is a country that used to pride itself in smelling like orange blossoms. And now we have visited a few of the landfills here in Lebanon. They, they all seem to be temporary solutions. And some experts suggest that you are sitting on a time bomb, that this thing could, could generate a massive catastrophe in terms of damage to the environment. Is something going to be done in Absolutely. Lebanon to Look, control yeah. waste management? We, uh, just to give you the un unfortunate example, in 2010, my government had uh, agreed on the policy uh, plan for the future of the waste to management, but nobody implemented it. So now I had to, in the new government, uh, the past government, to renew the policy, we went ahead and approved all the uh, RFPs of all the, you know, of the, all the bits that needs to be launched. And actually Beirut is going to launch very soon and we will launch the others in, in other places. But yes, the solutions we have today were, were temporary. Whereas in our, op my opinion is we need to, to make sure that we have temporary, but we have the lasting solution also to be launched. The new government will launch about three to four, uh, uh, um, what do you call them, factories or, or uh, factories for waste to energy uh, simultaneously and they will be finished in two years or two years and a half. By then the temporary would have closed down and we will start with the, with the, with the fixed ones. Mm -hmm. The problem is the division we had in the country. 
and the vid division has uh, has you know uh, stopped any advancement in the country today we have a consensus today yes we're quarreling about a seat here and a seat there for the formation of the government but that's political parties and that's the part of the game of democracy but at the same time we will come to a, f uh, a, go a government. It and does seem interesting to hear you say, sorry to interrupt you, that you have a consensus when you don't even have a government. No, we, I know, but uh, look, all of them agree on one thing, stability of Lebanon, security of Lebanon, and everybody wants to work fighting to fight corruption and to do something for the economy. The problem we have today in formation is political size. Okay, and I think if we look at what's happening in around the world, if you look at uh, countries in Europe, Belgium, or even countries that, you know, uh, Germany and others, it took them time. But I believe that, you know, our situation is more complex, but I, I'm sure that we will get there in, in the very coming few weeks, inshallah. <laughs> I want to talk about Syria. Yeah. Um, because we uh, the opposition opposition forces have all but capitulated in syria you've got a last stronghold in idlib there are reports that a massive offensive is in the plans and that could spell the end of the war in syria what would that mean for lebanon i think i think russia would have made its point and uh, and russia controls syria so we will deal with the russians what is your relationship like with russia very good, perfect. I have a very good relationship with uh, Russia and I have a good relationship with President Putin that I respect very much. And I believe that we somebody we can work with. Uh, so you don't think you will have to deal with Bashar al-Assad? I'd rather you uh, deal with President Putin. There is another world leader that you seem to get along very well, the US President Donald Trump. You said, uh, and I quote, that you appreciate his leadership in the region. Is Donald Trump doing a good job in the Middle East? Look, uh, I think uh, each one takes it from his own side, how he perceives the, 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 you know, the moves and that the United States uh, is making. I think President Trump is somebody who is very clear. He says something, he does it. The, the issue what, where we had a problem in the past is we didn't know what was the policies. At least today, I know what is the policy. At least I know today how to work out around this policy or with this policy. And at least there is somebody we can talk to and convince them about our situation. Uh, I believe that, you know, like you said, now Syria with what's happening as if the war was uh, ending or all of that. But this is due to the failure of the international community really to do something for the Syrian people. And, you know, the international community is, has, has a leadership, which was the United States and Europe. At the time, in the past, failed the policies. And I think until 2015, 15, you had no ISIS, no, you had no Nusra, you had nobody. You had a r people who were revolting against their, uh, their government. And due to the disparity of people, and after using all this kind of gas and atrocities, then came in ISIS and all these bunch of crazy people who deserve f what they are getting uh, and ruined the whole you know, Syrian revolution. So I believe that uh, President Trump vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, you know, the, the security in the, in the region, uh, I think he has some good points. Uh, we have p maybe some differences, but I, I think, you know, when it comes to Lebanon, he has helped the refugees, he has helped the LAF, he has helped the United States, he's helping the ISF, he's, uh, they are helping us rebuilding our institution, which is something that we appreciate a lot. Right. Prime Minister Hariri, thank you very much for thank speaking you. to us. Thank you.